Hey YouTube, it's your girl Dr. J and I thought I would come back and do uh, my next video. I think this is nine. So this is homeschooling um, 109 and it is on bookkeeping. <laughs> okay, so one question that I get asked a lot and I think all kind of veteran homeschoolers get asked this question and it's about bookkeeping. How do you know, do you keep a binder? How do you keep records? And um, what I want to talk about is one, why bookkeeping is important. And two, why it's important to find the method that works for you, regardless of what anyone else is doing. Okay, so why is bookkeeping important? Well, for some people, um, depending on the state or even the country that you're homeschooling in, bookkeeping is important just legally wise. Like you have to have certain records and you have to keep those records for a certain amount of time. So just, you know, uh, just legally, that's what some people have to do. But not everybody lives in states with those kind of requirements. I don't live in a state with that, those kind of requirements, but I do extensive bookkeeping or extensive record keeping in my homeschool and the reason um there are there are really um three or four reasons why i do this the first reason is just to make sure that i'm tracking the things that we do um you sometimes if you don't keep a record of what you do, then you have, when you go to do a review, whether that be at the end of the semester or at the end of the year, you have what is called the recency effect. And the recency effect means I only remember the last thing that I did. So what, what was the most recent thing that we did? And if that is on a high note, you can overestimate, or if that is on a low note, you can end up underestimating the things um, that you've been doing. And so I really like keeping notes throughout um, the semester, whether that be weekly um, or, or not. I wanna make sure that I keep a good record of what we're doing so that when I do a review, I can make sure that I'm, I'm keeping track of it all. And I actually don't just do this for homeschooling. I do this in other areas of my life. I do this professionally where um, I update my resume as things change in my work. I, I update my, my personal uh, portfolio of things I've done for my jobs because for some places that I'm at, I have to do an annual review um, and it helps me to be able to say, okay, I've done X, Y, and Z. Um, without having to try to, you know, think back in my brain that's getting older and foggier and try to remember all of those things. And f in my homeschool, it's so much more important because we end up doing a lot of stuff. And some things are just one-offs or two-offs. And, you know, you may have done it over um, a, a, a day or two or even a week. And if you've done it in, in August and you're trying to, it's, it's now, you know, April, and you're trying to think back to everything that you accomplished, it can be really hard. And so record keeping is good because it helps you keep track. And, and bookkeeping is really good because it helps you keep track of what you've done so you're not falling into the trap of the recency effect where you only remember the last things you guys did as opposed to a, a full and whole picture. The um, second reason why I do bookkeeping is because at some point I have to write transcripts for my kids. Even though we're not at that point just yet, I like to get a lot of practice in record keeping so that when it's time to write a transcript, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel at the same time that we're trying to navigate AP or dual enrollment, college visits. Um, what's going to be required. You know, I don't want to be learning how to take good notes at the same time that I'm navigating this, you know, really complex system of, you know, um, turning those notes over and having them evaluated by someone else, not just for college admittance, but, you know, scholarships and, and all that other sort of stuff. So it really helps me to get in good practice so I can see what are the methods that are going to work for me? So 
um, bookkeeping is is good just because um, at some point whether your child goes back into a traditional K through 12 environment or if your child is going on to college or university you're going to have to be able to produce some records and the better you are at keeping records the the easier it's going to be when it's time for you to customize those records for the audiences that you're going to have to do the customization for. And so um, that's another reason why I do it. Um, a third reason why I do bookkeeping is just um, for the downs, you know. Um, a lot of times um, we go into homeschooling and we think that, you know, every day is going to be, you know, just this same. And sometimes we think that every day is going to be this, you know, high plateau. Um, but that life's not like that. You know, most days are okay. And just in life, mo most of your days are just, you know, just okay. You know, it's routine. And then some days you're like, wow, this is the best. And then, you know, occasionally you have um, a low, low day. And when you do good bookkeeping, on those days when you feel like, oh my gosh, I've got nothing done, I've got nothing accomplished, my kids have done nothing, you can look back over those records and you see that, oh my gosh, we, we've done a ton, you know, we've actually done a lot. Or if it feels like, you know, oh, is my child really progressing, you can go back and look at those notes and you can see that, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, this time next last year, this is where they were and this year, this is where they are. You'll also be able to see if there are issues that you need to contend with for your child because, you know, you can also track things like regression or you can track things like, okay, this is something that I, that we had mastered before, but now they're having trouble with it. And, you know, it's just, you know, data and information is just really good to have. And so that's why I love it um, because you you can, you know, at a glance, be able to see exactly what's going on in your homeschool and in regards to each child's individual learning. And um, a <laughs> fourth reason to that I like record keeping is because it helps me much easier keep my husband informed. Um, my husband is an engineer <laughs> and, and they are data hungry people. They like um, figures and numbers. <laughs> and so it's great to be able to sit down with him and we can talk about, you know, what specific things have happened. But also, you know, um, there's, you know, I always have in the back, I'm a, I'm a worst case scenario type of person where I always think of the worst Thing that could possibly happen and how would I react to that worst possible thing and I prepare for that worst possible thing because I figure if I'm prepped for the zombie apocalypse then a you know tornado is not gonna really hurt me because if I can survive you know living in the time of the walking dead then I can survive you know this or that and so I think okay what happens if you know some you know government agency knocks on my door and says what have you been doing with your kids and I can be able to you know pull that stuff out and I can show it so even though that that's you know not something that's likely to happen at least I'm prepared for those sort of things so I, I can show those things and then also just to family and friends um one of the things I used to do is I used to send a weekly newsletter out to you know all of my family you know, saying, hey, here's what the kids did and showing them pictures and stuff like that. But it got time consuming um, and, I, and I stopped doing that. But I do still, um, we do like a yearbook for the kids each year and I'll send stuff out to family and, and different things and, and post things on um, different social media just to kind of show people, you know, sometimes people are just interested. We're the only people in our um, family that homeschool, and sometimes people are just interested. I know that a lot of times people assume that when your family members or your friends are questioning you about homeschooling, that it's a challenge. But sometimes it's just they're they're intrigued by it. They they've never seen it before. They'd like to see it, and so being able to like pull things out and show people that that's that's a good thing. So, um, I I do it for those sort of reasons. And other people have their own reasons for good bookkeeping, um, but it's I've I found that no one has ever regretted keeping a, a lot of information. I've, I've never met a homeschooler who said, "Oh my gosh, I kept so many notes about what we did, and I really wish I would not have done that." I've only <laughs> seen the flip side where people said, 
I did not keep track of what we did and it, you know, came back to bite me. So um, th those are, you know, reasons why, why I think bookkeeping is important. Now, the next question that I often get is what type of bookkeeping do you do? And I don't actually like to go into a lot of detail in how I do it. And it's really because the way that I do it probably is not a good fit for most people. Why? Because, like I said, my husband, he's he's a data-hungry person, but I am also a data-hungry person. I love, love data. I love um, having things at my fingertips and writing down everything that's happened and stuff. So my notes for my kids, at the beginning of the year, they tend to start at about um, three to four pages. And by the end of a school year, I probably have 15 to 20 pages um, worth of notes um, on the things that my kids have done. I go concept by concept. So, you know, I don't just say, okay, um, Speedster is in, you know, did pre-algebra. I actually list out every single concept that he covers in his books. Um, and, I, and since he's also, you know, he's in the fifth grade, so I write down every single math concept that it is expected for a fifth grader to know. And then I know when he has achieved mastery of those concepts. And I do that for the twins too. And the twins don't share a sheet. They each have their own sheet. So even though their sheets are very similar, as far as what are the things that we want to accomplish, I wanna make sure that I have that out. Um, and I have those notes. Not everybody <laughs> needs that level of detail. You know, not everybody needs, you know, 15 pages of notes for a third grader when that's generally what I have. And I don't think that it's necessary. It's more it that that level of record keeping where I'm keeping, you know, these are the books that we use, these are the, you know, titles and author and that sort of stuff. Um, that level of bookkeeping is just part of that that's just my type A personality. Um, I, I don't think that that is a requirement and I don't think that you're doing a bad job if that's not the type of record keeping that you do. I know some people, they use their own personal blogs as record keeping and that's great. That's what works for them and I think that that's great. Some people use their Instagram as a record keeping. Other people have um, kind of journals or binders that they write in and they keep their notes in. Some people use things like Evernote or other apps. And so you have a lot of different options. Other people are using a combination of, of, of all of those things. So, you know, you have different options of what's going to work for you. The biggest thing is to try things out and find out what's going to work for you. Don't get caught up in things that are just fancy or pretty because sometimes when people show their binders, they look beautiful. You're like, oh, wow, look at that. That's so wonderful. And then you go, oh, I want to do that. I did that. Um, I know a couple years ago um, we did um, a blog hop with um, Mrs. Mahogany, and it was great. Um, and girl, if you ever want to do that again, you need to do it again because that was really fun. But um, we did a, a vlog hop um, and one of the weeks um, at the beginning of the school year was that everybody was supposed to show their binder. And I showed my binder and I pulled it out and it was actually, you know, it was, it was, it was fun. And that was a good way for me to keep records. But I actually changed that. Each of my kids still has a binder but they keep their own binders. And then I have like a general binder for stuff, but that's not where I keep my record keeping from. So in the binder, I'm not actually writing ISBN numbers and all that kind of stuff, but I do keep that stuff in my um, Word document. I, that my, my, you know, 15 to 20 page list, that's actually a Word document that I keep, that I add to. And um, honestly, I'm at it probably about, for this year, like I just, we just finished our um, fall semester and I think that we're at about 12 to 15 pages for the end of fall semester. So probably by the end of this school year, I maybe double what like I would have been in the past, but that's just because Speedster went into middle school and so my record keeping really amped up because I'm really trying to practice for high school. Um, but again, this is a type A personality trying to practice for high school. Um, other people don't need to do that. So I am like, you know, the Hermione Granger 
<laughs> of record keeping and you know so i'm like a raving call slash gryffindor and you might be a hufflepuff <laughs> for record keeping and that's gonna be cool too it's just finding what's gonna work for you because the biggest thing is consistency that you do it and if you create this really cute book that you look at and you don't add anything to you haven't done good bookkeeping and um, if you are just writing on napkins, but you have all those napkins and they are in order and you can read your handwriting and you can use them for whatever reason you need, then you've done great bookkeeping. So don't get caught up in um, the fancy aspect. Some people, their binders are beautiful, but that's that's them. Everything they do is beautiful. Like, that's that's them. So th they didn't do it just to show it or put it on, you know, um, YouTube or Instagram or something like that. They did it because that's their personality. And if you look through other things that they do, everything they do is like that. It, it's beautiful. But there are other people who they're more like techie. So their stuff is going to be more um, blogs or or vlogs or you know Evernote or something like that and um people that are more analytical um and fall in line on the more analytical side like like me it's going to look more like you know um <laughs> a you know spreadsheet um or a research paper or something like that so just really find the bookkeeping method that's going to work for you you want to look for something that you can be consistent with you want to look for something that once you write it in it, you know how to retrieve it and you know how to use it. You want to put enough information in there so that if you need to use that information for later, that's going to be fine. And also use what's going to work for your family. Like I said, I, I take my husband into consideration when I'm doing my record keeping. And so you, if, if you have a spouse or um, someone else, then you want to take that into consideration if you have to report to an agency and they have forms and everything like that, you want to take that into consideration. But the biggest thing is just find your method, find what's going to work for you, and go with it. I hope this helps. This is Dr. J, and I'm out. Bye-bye.